Good morning. Kathleen Harvey here. Good morning, you guys. So, you know that you're supposed to do a Facebook Live if you feel incredibly nervous before you do it. This morning I went and sat down at my computer and God just instantly said, you, you need to fight this battle online today. And I thought, no, God, I don't really want to fight this battle online today. And he said, yes, you really should. There's other people that need it other than you, Kathleen. So um, I'm coming to you this morning with a burden on my heart for some friends. And I'm going to try. I probably will cry here. Um, just some some really heavy stuff happening in the last 24 hours. And I am feeling really heavy for people that are fighting that battle. And yeah. So, and if you cry on Facebook, that's another indication you're supposed to do it. <laughs> so like if you start to feel all weepy and sensitive and just like this pit in your stomach that, like a nervous kind of feeling, you're supposed to speak it out loud. That's one of the things I've really, really learned lately. So I'm coming to you because I want to pray. I want to pray for these people and I want to expose who the real enemy is today. Um, and that is Satan. He is, he's mean, you guys. He's really mean. And he plays with our minds all the time. And he's been trying to do it to me. And I'm just not going to let him win. And I'm not going to let him win for you guys either. So um, I've put, to, put together like really quickly. God just, I, I could read to you a bunch of stuff this morning. And I, I think I'm going to. So this is a book, uh, Bible study. I know it's backwards. But it's called The Armor of God by Priscilla Shriver. That I've been doing with some sweet friends and if you can get your hands on this or go to this Bible study, um, good stuff. Good stuff. Some of her videos, I think, are online. But anything by Priscilla Shriver is, she's really gifted. And so she talks about the enemy's strategies in here. And I'm just going to read off to you. And I want you to put yourself, I want you to see if any of these apply to what's going on in your own life right now. After pulling a large cross-section of women and asking them to reveal the primary ways the enemy attacks their lives, several common categories define their responses. Below are 10 of the enemy's favorite strategies to use against God's women as they pursue abundant life in Christ. Strategy 1. Against your passion. He seeks to dim your whole desire for prayer, dull your interest in spiritual things, and downplay the potency of your most strategic weapons. Ephesians 6. Strategy number two, against your focus. He disguises himself and manipulates your perspective, so you end up focusing on the wrong culprit, directing your weapons at the wrong enemy. 2 Corinthians 11.14. Strategy number three, against your identity. He magnifies your insecurities, leading you to doubt what God says about you to disregard what he's given you, Ephesians 1, 17 through 19. Strategy number four, against your family. He wants to disintegrate your family. Divide your home, rendering it in chaotic, restless, and unfruitful work, Genesis 3, 1 through 7. Strategy five, against your confidence. He constantly reminds you of your past mistakes and bad choices, hoping to convince you that you're under God's judgment rather than under the blood. Revelation 12.10 Blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony is what that verse says. And this is your testimony. So when you speak things out, that is what gives you power. Strategy 6, against your calling. He amplifies fear, worry, and anxiety until they're the loudest voices in your head causing you to deem the adventure of following God too risky to attempt. Joshua 14, 8. Strategy number seven, against your purity. He tries to tempt you towards certain sins, convincing you that you can tolerate them without risking consequence. 
knowing they'll only wedge distance between you and God. Isaiah 59, 1 through 2. Strategy number eight, against your rest and contentment. He hopes to overload your life and schedule, pressuring you to constantly push beyond your limits, never feeling permission to say no. Deuteronomy 5.15 Strategy number nine, against your heart. He uses every opportunity to keep old wounds fresh in mind, knowing that anger and hurt and bitterness and unforgiveness will continue to roll the damage forward. Hebrews 12, 15. And strategy 10, against your relationships. He creates disruption and disunity within your circle of friends and within the shared community of the body of Christ. 1 Timothy 2, 8. Okay, so that's just 10 strategies that Priscilla Shriver points out are stuff that we're dealing with on a regular basis. And I can relate to so many of those right now, and I'm sure you guys can too. So... This morning I picked up this book, again, I know it's backwards, but it's by Rick Renner, and is it's called Sparkling Gems from the Greek, and I love, I have like, he has like a mini version of this, so if you just want like declarations and prayers, he has that, And but this is kind of the full version, so I'm just going to read to you a part of what he talks about, effective spiritual weapons require effective spiritual strategies. In this one powerful verse, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, 2 Corinthians 10, 4, Paul speaks to us about the subject of spiritual warfare. In fact, this is one of the foundational verses on this subject, so it's vital to understand what Paul is talking about. Today, I want to especially draw your attention to three words in this power-packed scripture. Pay attention to the words weapons, warfare, and carnal. First, Paul tells us that we have weapons. These spiritual armaments have been provided by God and are at our disposal. They are both offensive and defensive weapons and can be found in Ephesians 6, 13 through 18, where Paul lists them one by one and explains what each piece represents. Second, Paul uses the word warfare. The word warfare is taken from the word stratos. By choosing to use this word, the Holy Spirit alerts us to some very important facts about spiritual warfare. The word stratos is where we derive the word strategy. This informs us that spiritual warfare does not occur accidentally, but is something that is strategically planned. Just as any army plans its line of attack before the battle begins, the devil plans a line of attack excuse me, a line of attack, decides which methods he will use and chooses the approach he wants to take as he cautiously charts a well-thought-out assault. But the word stratos doesn't just describe the devil's strategies. It also tells us that if we listen to the Holy Spirit, he will give us a strategy that is superior to any schemes of the devil. The devil is not the only one with a strategy. The Holy Spirit always holds the key to every victory, and he wants to provide us with a divinely inspired strategy that will render null the, and void the words of the devil every time. Every time. You guys, that's so encouraging to me that the Holy Spirit can tell us, dang it, what the devil is doing. So when you are in strife with somebody, when you are having, when your kids are attacked, in just a second, your, I got a phone call, sorry, your kids are attacked. And that's the other thing that he starts to try and do is distractions, like just crazy, crazy distractions of things that are not useful or that drain you. And I know that I have been feeling that this, this last week. Okay, so he gives he gives a couple he gives a prayer and then a confession and then so I'm just going to read his confession real quick. No, I'm going to read the prayer. Lord, I know that today I'm going to need supernatural strategy. You can agree with me with this, okay? 
to do what I need to do. My own natural mind is working all the time to come up with solutions. I'm doing the best I can do, but now I need extra help. I need divine strategy. I need a divine idea so powerful and effective that no force will be able to resist it. I know these kinds of strategies are imparted by the Holy Spirit, so right now I open my heart wide to Him. Holy Spirit, I ask you to drop a supernatural idea into my spirit and soul. Help me to properly discern it, understand it, and then follow through with obedience. I pray this in Jesus' name. And then, so I just want to share with you, lots of you have heard me say this, but Ephesians 6, one is really 6, 10 and following, is one of the, like when you are starting to feel that pressure, Whatever it is, whatever is going on, I there's so many what ifs that I could give you scenarios, but it, it really doesn't matter. When you feel distracted, when you feel like you're getting an attitude or you're going to go off the edge or you're going to complain to somebody or you just feel yuck, get Ephesians 6, 10 and following out, okay? 10 through 20, I think it is, 19, 20, 20. And just read it. If you don't, it, we've talked about this before on, a, on on Periscope, I think, previously. Like, you might not know how to pray. Yeah, I was never taught how to pray. Well, sort of. I was Catholic. I was raised Catholic. So I was taught how to pray. But then when it came to, like, praying for myself or reading the Bible or anything like that, like, I had no idea what to do because I was always told what to do. Okay, so I just want to encourage you like the word of God, the Bible is living. That means that like what you're supposed to get from it, you'll get from it. You just have to open up. And you guys, it's an app on your phone. You can download the Bible app on your phone, have it read to you in the mornings when you're getting ready. You don't even have to sit down and read it. But gosh, you guys, there's stuff that happens when I open the actual Bible and read it. It's amazing, okay? So it's living. So here. See that? Do you see that? Ah, that is totally what Satan does right there. Right there. He works through the internet all the time. All the time. If you're, if you're talking to somebody and you're getting encouragement or you're having a good conversation then all of a sudden you drop the line all of a sudden a call comes in or something gets distracted or your kid something happens water is spilled or whatever every time you guys Satan I will not have it you should see me on the other line I was ticked off he is that is he does not want us to speak truth he doesn't, and he will go at every opportunity to discourage us and to keep us from moving forward. You guys, when we are moving forward, oh, yeah. Mm. Okay, so I'm just going to read to you Ephesians 6, which is where I left off, I hope. At least that's hopefully where I was. That's where I was in my line. Okay, Ephesians 6, 10. So pray this with me. If you have your Bible, you're welcome to open it. Finally, my brothers, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers on the internet, against the rulers of darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand the evil in the evil day, having done all to stand. It's really important, that verse right there. When you feel like you've done everything you need to do, you have to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, the, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all of the fiery darts of the wicked one 
and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints, and for me, that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may speak it boldly as I ought to speak. So ladies, gentlemen, put your armor on. Take your oil that you have, anoint, you, that's what it means, like you anoint your head with oil, right? It talks about that in the Bible. Anoint your body and picture that shield going all the way over your body because that is the power that is within each of you. If you know Jesus Christ, that authority and that power to do that every day over your whole family, over people that you know and don't know, is, is within you. And, and today is the day to use it. It's an important day to use it, honestly. Yeah, it's an important day. And that's why we're feeling more and more pressure. So I'm just going to pray real quick. Lord, thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for giving us that authority. And thank you for letting us use it. God, I just ask that you would just anoint my friends that are struggling today those that are experiencing loss, those that are wondering what's going to happen. Lord, we just ask for your protection. And we pray that shield. We pray that armor. And Lord, that you would give us your sword. That you would give us the words today to speak over the situations that are not from you. And that you would bind Satan from having that hold over us and over those that we love today. In Jesus' name. If there is something that I can pray for, for you today, please don't hesitate. You know what? I challenge you to like put it right here. Put it on this feed, because there's a verse that says, where two or more are gathered, there I am in the midst of them. And Deuteronomy 32, I looked it up earlier, 32, 30, I think, it talks about, you know, when we pray by ourselves, one man chases a thousand angels to flight. But when you pray with two people, you put 10,000 angels to flight. That's 10,000 more, you guys. So let's, each time we do that, we're putting more and more power. So pray for each other today. Love on one another. Be blessed. Go pour on power.